so hard to find these seem impossible to score so I dream of to somebody find that vintage love hello everybody I am going to do this video over jelly bellies um I didn't think uh, to do this one because I thought everybody kind of knew more about Jelly Bellies, but uh, Lace from uh, or Lace Vintage Shop actually um, asked me to do this video, and I know people love Jelly Bellies. I just I thought maybe um, everybody kind of knew about Jelly Bellies, but that's a silly assumption because I had to learn about them. So why wouldn't other people? And uh, I am excited to do this and I wanted I looked up beforehand to see if there was any other like big videos out there about jelly bellies there's really not so I I named it the ultimate guide to jelly bellies because I did a lot of um, I already knew a whole lot but I did some more research on it just to make sure I was correct about um, what I already knew you know, because we don't all know everything. <laughs> but uh, I hope this helps and I hope you enjoy it. I love Jelly Bellies. I come across them um, not really that often, but since I'm out there a whole lot, I do come across them and they sell really great. They're amazing for collectors. I have uh, quite a few in my collection and now um, I have quite a few that I can resell. That is very nice. <laughs> it really can help out the bank account. Um, so I hope you enjoy this. I hope it helps. And uh, I hope you learn a whole lot. So uh, enjoy the ultimate guide to jelly bellies. Uh, jewelry, not the jelly beans. Those are delicious too. So it's really hard to grasp um, the true Jelly Belly without knowing a little bit more about the history. Um, because a lot of people will just put uh, like Jelly Belly, whether it's just a clear rhinestone or a glass cabochon, that's not a true Jelly Belly. Um, so without kind of knowing the history of it a little bit, it's hard to really know um, exactly what a jelly belly is or should be and there's a lot of people out there who just use jelly belly as clickbait I do it um, I'm not gonna lie I'm very uh, what do you say guilty I'm guilty guys when I'm selling something and I use it not just for clickbait because I'm not trying to trick anybody because even in my description I'll say people call this a jelly belly like it's not really a jelly belly but I won't a lot of people do still see just glass cabochons as jelly bellies so I don't want to lose those those views for something I'm selling so if you're doing that as a reseller please know I'm not condemning you but please know too that it's not really a jelly belly so for all you collectors out there who don't know for all you resellers who don't know and want to know i am going to tell you the history and eh, sorry my husband always gets mad at me for telling the history of everything because i do that even at the dinner table but i'm gonna do it anyway so here we go lucite <laughs> We generally describe most acrylics as lucite, just like we use a blanket term of band-aid for like all bandages. However, lucite is a brand name of DuPont Company that was made in 1931. Plexiglass is the same acrylic, it's just a different brand name. Lucite by DuPont is supposedly the most superior version though, so I'm going to be referring to this as lucite throughout the video. Although Lucite was invented in 1931, it wasn't introduced to a large commercial market until 1939 and the 1940 New York World's Fair at the DuPont Pavilion. It was a huge success, but then it was conscribed to be used for the World War II, um, the war efforts on airplane windshields, submarine periscopes, uh, there was a lot of different wartime machinery and wartime uses that Lucite was good for and it also 
was transparent, lightweight, and had the ability to be bulletproof. When World War II ended, the surplus was extreme to say the least. Then inspiration struck and people began to use it in the fashion industry um, for its transparency, the lasting power, flexibility. It could be carved and colored and molded. It was extremely durable. It didn't turn yellow from its clear like original state. And it's still used today in airplane windows, the fashion industry, just in so many different ways. So what actually defines a jelly belly? So the first thing that a jelly belly must have is this clear lucite cabochon. It doesn't actually have to be a belly, but it has to be clear. No color. That is just the rules of the game. A lot of people would say, oh, hey, what if it's red but still translucent? In the collecting world, it's still a no. It has to be clear. Um, there's an example here that is very almost iffy, you know, it, but it's not completely translucent and clear. Um, but a lot of people would still call this a jelly belly, and I couldn't blame them very much. But the clear element is what makes it a jelly belly. Now, these little rhinestones, some people even debate whether if they have these rhinestones, it's a jelly belly. Well, yes, in the collecting world, people still say this is a jelly belly because of the clear cabochon in there and it has to be acrylic or lucite it has to be that material it can't be glass or a rhinestone it has to be the the cabochon and you can see here it's a belly again but it doesn't have to be a part of a body it can just be an element of the jewelry like in these earrings here they have this just swirl of it, but it's still a big see-through. You can even see the backing of the earrings. Um, cabochon there. Here it's the vase. And here's the sail of a ship. So that is one of the main elements that makes it a jelly belly. It has to be clear acrylic lucite. This is what it has to be on there. So another aspect that makes it a true jelly belly is that it's set in this metal. So we have our cabochon and it's set in a metal setting as you can see on these earrings. And then most of the time this metal setting here is sterling or it's vermeil. Uh, I used to call it vermeil, which I think a lot of people probably did or still do, but it is pronounced vermeil. And it's a gold wash over sterling. So that's what most of them are set in, but they have to be set in the sterling, vermeil, or just a base metal for it to be considered that with the cabochon. Now the cabochon can be carved, such as like the lilies and flowers and stuff they have, but it cannot be just like this. This is just a cute carved dog with some enamel painting. This is just a carved lucite brooch, not a jelly belly. And here's another piece of lucite. The feather portions are lucite, and then here we have a carved wooden body so it's still a really beautiful pin however it's just not a jelly belly because it has this um gray transparent lucite on it it has to have that metal component to be a jelly belly so trafari being one of the more fashion forward companies as they are in the costume jewelry world uh, they were one of the first, if not the first, to use lucite in these Jelly Belly creations, using them as the centerpiece of a sterling uh, structure, 
we see jewelry going from that colorful palette to a more somber, elegant palette for the World War II era. The jewelry is made more of sterling and or gold over sterling uh, because the other metal was rationed for the war effort. This is why sterling and costume jewelry is mostly attributed to this period in time. And the loose side allowed this jewelry to become even a more elegant color pattern and utilize less metal while still having these really big and beautiful bold pieces of jewelry. So in part two, I'll be showing you more of the photo catalog of all the known Jelly Bellies, the Maker's Marks, and I'll be showing you the reproductions and the misrepresented pieces so you know what not to buy if you're looking for that special Jelly Belly piece. So I hope to see you again on part two. Thank you for watching. I'm looking for that vintage flame But all complexions that I adore So hard to find, they seem impossible to score